As many of you may already know, we have an integrated heat pump cylinder, the Mixergy IHP that runs our hot water, and that's great for Kat and I, just the two of us in our house. We've got a 180 litre cylinder, so um, that's more than enough for just the two of us. Um, we've actually sized it sufficiently for um, the house of this size, four bedroom uh, detached house, so that uh, you could get four or five people through, um, through a shower with no problems. But uh, the cylinder was put to the ultimate test uh, over Christmas because we had all of Kat's family come to stay for a couple of days. We had uh, Kat's parents, her brother and his girlfriend and Kat's uncle. So there were seven of us. Now, I was a bit worried because uh, the cylinder's never done uh, enough hot water for that many people before. And uh, heat pump cylinders are brilliant. They're very efficient, of course. Um, but uh, the one disadvantage that they have is that they are quite slow to reheat the cylinder. So uh, I was a bit worried that this was going to cause a problem for the hot water supply over the Christmas period. And uh, so I was thinking, right, how am I going to best manage uh, the, uh, the hot water in the house? So uh, when everyone arrived, we said, look, I'm going to, going to level with you. There's seven people here. We're not going to be able to run seven showers back to back. That is not going to, not going to be uh, doable for the current system. So if everyone can be a little bit uh, considerate and perhaps uh, maybe spread out the showers a little bit, um, we might be able to make it through uh, the, uh, the Christmas period without any trouble. But I did have a contingency and um, my plan was uh, to heat the, heat the water normally uh, from uh, overnight during the, the cheap octopus go periods from half past midnight up until um, half past five, although usually it's finished a little bit before that. And that would give uh, Kat and I plenty of hot water for first thing in the morning. Uh, so the plan was for Kat and I to get up before everyone else, have our showers, and then immediately start reheating the cylinder again. Um, so that uh, by the time everyone else had their showers, there'd be plenty more hot water to, to go uh, around. Um, and so that was my plan. So what I did was I set up the schedule, um, as you can see in uh, in this screenshot here, so that uh, we had two periods of, of heating and at uh, eight o'clock, um, Kat and I would, would more or less start our showers around about that time. So um, the, the plan was to immediately start heating the hot water again. Um, but I also had a contingency that if somebody else actually got up before us and started using the hot water, if the charge level of the cylinder got down less than 50%, it would immediately start heating again by default without having to hit that new scheduled period. Um, so that was my sort of backstop position. As it turns out, we didn't need that. That was fine because everyone everyone got up a lot later than Kat and I, so that was fine. Um, so uh, yeah, that was my plan. And uh, in addition to that, I set the temperature of the cylinder up to its maximum of 55 degrees. So the idea being that if you've heated the cylinder, um, the most it can possibly go get to, that means that each, each shower, for example, will need slightly less of the cylinder's volume uh, to provide sufficient hot water for that shower. In other words, the hotter the water, the more you will dilute it with cold water. So the same volume of shower will use less volume of actual cylinder hot water, right? So that was the, that was the idea. So f with that basis, I thought that we'd probably get maybe f at least four, possibly five showers um, from the 180 litre cylinder. Uh, now I should also say that we've got rain head showers, so they use quite a bit of water, uh, which is why I thought that you know it, it would be uh, probably touch and go to get more than about four or five showers through all in one go. But the idea was, if we were to start reheating immediately after Kat and I had had our showers, there might be sufficient then sufficient hot water then for the last two or three showers maybe to go through uh, later in the day, um, you know, sort of you know nine or ten o'clock or whatever. Uh, so that was the plan. And, uh, and it went pretty well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the actual uh, charts from the Mixergy data that we've got on, the, on their web portal. Now they're quite busy, but I will walk you through it step by step. So uh, let's, walk, uh, let's move over to the, uh, the web portal and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right, so this is the web portal data for Christmas Day. And you can see that we started heating uh, at uh, half past midnight during the Octopus Go cheat period. And, at, and uh, the tank got to... 100% state of charge by well about quarter past four, so that was fine, no problem. Um, you can see that uh, the temperature was uh, was nice and hot um, up here. It says 53 degrees. The bottom temperature 57, so um, average temperature about 55 degrees um, in the uh, in the cylinder uh, overnight. And then Kat and I um, we got up at about eight o'clock. We had our showers, and you can see that's where that this drop in the state of charge. So this um, this sort of slow fade here is just the tank slowly um, cooling down under its own uh, uh, natural processes and then um, Kat and I had our showers and the, and the state of charge dropped significantly but by this point you can see we're already re starting to reheat the cylinder at eight o'clock 
So um, you can see the state of charge then turns around at about nine o'clock and then zooms up again and hits very nearly 100% uh, at about 10 to 11. Now, uh, amazingly, this was actually the first time that anybody else in the, in the house uh, had a shower. So everyone else was slobbing around all morning um, in their pajamas until 11 o'clock. And then I can't remember who it was. One of one of uh, Kat's parents went to have a, have a shower um, at the, when, when the state of charge was at, was at 99%. Now, uh, the um, schedule obviously was set so that it turns off at 100%, which means that this shower happened just before the cylinder was naturally going to turn itself off. But because they used some hot water, about 10% of the, the cylinder actually, as it, as it turns out, um, the uh, the cylinder still had another 10% to heat up again, so then it continued heating until about quarter past 11 and uh, and then uh, um, stopped because it had hit 100%. And then a bunch of other people had showers and you can see it's, um, you know, it drops away. Um, but uh, I think the last shower was, was at this point here at about midday um, and Kat and I were busy cooking Christmas dinner at this point. Um, so uh, uh, everyone else was uh, happy to just uh, have their showers at their leisure. Um, and then um, uh, the, the state of charge just sort of trickled down during the day as we did bits of washing up here and there. Um, I, I don't know what happened here. That was probably a, quite a large uh, batch of washing up uh, in the afternoon and then some more and uh, um, all the way through until the end of the day. So that was fine. That was um, plenty of hot water. Absolutely tons, in fact. Um, uh, the water was <laughs> piping hot and uh, everyone had um, plenty of showers and uh, we had loads of hot water for, for washing up as well. Um, so uh, I should also mention that um, my, um, my extra backstop position was if we'd had um, most people through the showers and we were running low on hot water, um, I could always use the boost mode um, for uh, the cylinder. So uh, that's this, um, this control here where you can just uh, drag this bar up here and um, the cylinder will start heating in boost mode um, and uh, that sends hot water directly to the top of the cylinder so um, in other words you immediately start getting hot water at the top of the cylinder which is usable rather than the normal heating mode um, where we go we, we've uh, we've lost the date here so let's go back here um, the normal heating mode uh, is uh, is this one here where it heats it sends the hot water to the bottom of the cylinder so there therefore the whole cylinder heats up uniformly um, whereas uh, in boost mode it d injects the hot water directly into the top of the cylinder. Now I, the reason we don't tend to use boost mode if we can help it is that it's less efficient than using um, the, the normal mode. So the coefficient of performance in normal mode is, is quite a bit higher than it is in boost mode. In boost mode um, it's about 200% uh, efficiency whereas in normal mode it's you know, anywhere up to 3 or 400% efficiency. So uh, that's why we, my preference was to try and do it using the normal mode if possible. But if it came down to it in a pinch, we could have engaged the boost mode and uh, and heated in that way. Um, and of course, uh, it would have been really useful if we could have also used the immersion heater in a pinch. However, now this is one of the weird things about the Mixergy cylinder. I'm not entirely sure why it, why it's done this way. Potentially, it's just a controls uh, limitation. But uh, you can't actually engage the immersion heater at all unless the heat pump is broken in some way. So if there's a fault with the heat pump the immersion heater will is there as a backup and I'll, and I'll just pop up some statistics here you can see that the the, the heat pump heat output is about 1.5 kilowatts maximum but i think in realistically it tends to max out at about a kilowatt or so of um of heat output uh but the the immersion heater is um best part of two kilowatts so if we really really needed to heat the cylinder quickly it would have been useful to be able to combine the heat pump with the immersion heater um, obviously it would be less efficient to do it that way but if we absolutely desperately needed that hot water quickly it would have been useful to have engaged both the heat pump and the immersion heater at the same time but that's not possible given the current controls so um, if Mixergy are watching that would be um, something I would um, encourage you to look into providing that ability if you can for the IHP. I know it's extremely rare that you'd probably need to do that but in a pinch you know that might be a useful thing to do so uh, yeah that we could have um if, if that functionality had been available to us maybe we could have used that as well and um, not that we needed to in the end you know we had plenty of hot water people took so long over their uh, um, breakfast and uh, lounging around in the morning that we didn't really need it um, but i'll just show you um, what happened on the 26th um, you see it actually took a lot longer to reheat the cylinder um, overnight um, it, it took all the way up until 
um, 20 to 7 uh, to reheat the cylinder. So uh, that used a, a fair bit of energy. Um, but, you know, again, we were reheating the water by 8 o'clock when Kat and I had our showers. Similar pattern. Kat and I had our showers about 8 o'clock. It started reheating. Um, but uh, people started having their showers a little bit earlier on uh, Boxing Day. Um, and it got to the point where everyone had had their showers. So I just... Um, turned off the cylinder and the, the way you do that is you you set a uh, a um, an extra scheduled uh session on that day but to um heat the cylinder to zero percent i know it sounds a bit counterintuitive but that that turned off the cylinder so i set that up for 11 o'clock and you can see that the uh the cylinder stopped heating at 11 um, because we didn't really need any any further heating so that was fine um so yeah and again had plenty more hot water for for washing up and everything else you can see that um, all of the temperature charts here. I'm not going to go into all the details of the temperatures, um, but the, yeah, the state of charge you can see. Um, by the time everyone was done with their showers, we still had um, 50, 40, well, 45% of the of the cylinder was hot at that point. So we still have plenty for the rest of the day. Um, so yeah, um, all in all, uh, it actually worked a lot smoother than I was expecting, um, and I didn't even need to run the boost mode or anything like that. So uh, I was pretty pleased with uh, with how that went, um, and uh, yeah, no complaints about the way the the, the um, IHP performed. Um, it was um, absolutely faultless. So for those of you thinking of getting a heat pump cylinder, I hope that gave you a bit of food for thought. Uh, Generally speaking, they're brilliant, um, very uh, efficient, and uh, they work extremely well. Um, but uh, yeah, bear in mind that they uh, can be a little bit slow to uh, to reheat, and uh, occasionally you might need to do some uh, uh, shenanigans like like what we did uh, over the Christmas period. Not that it ended up being a problem, but there you go. Uh, something to bear in mind. If you're not already subscribed and uh, you find this sort of content uh, useful, then hit that subscribe button for, for more uh, nonsense like this. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.